I beg your pardon. I do not have the voice of my beloved brother and friend, nor my brother from Croatia who sings beautifully in English, and English is my native tongue. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Ooh. Ain't a very short hymn. Very short hymn. Let me do that again. I beg your pardon for hurting your ears this morning. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wondrous face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Oh, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother and friend Alexander Hartley, I am not. And our brother Sasha from Croatia, I am not. <laughs> it's your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures. It's Proverbs chapter 4. I've read this to you before, but I'm going to read it to you again. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20, on to verse 27. You are expected to go there. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Where do you find God's sayings? Right here in the authorized version of the scripture. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but that which is good for edifying, edifying the church of the living God. Let thine eyes look Right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. You know, for straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Ponder the path of thy feet, and if thy foot offends thee, cut it off. For it's better to go, uh, better to be lame than to have both feet to go into hell. I just paraphrased that. That's in Mark chapter 9. Go find that yourself. Where our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, talks about hell. Ponder the path of thy feet. Let all thy ways be established. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid. And that foundation is who? Jesus Christ. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. To the right hand or to the left. Meaning that there's room. Because broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. And many there be that go in there at. Right? Right? And it says, oh boy, beg your pardon. Glasses were scummy. Verse 25 Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Turn to Matthew chapter 6. 
This video is for our instruction in righteousness, which we need a whole lot of, don't we? <clears throat> we need a whole lot of this. Let's read verses 19 on to verse 23 in Matthew chapter 6. Start. Okay? Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 on to verse 23. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 is how it is going to be within the kingdom of heaven. Doctrinally and dispensationally, this was still under the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, we're offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hath not died, uh, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, nor shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sin. I know you know that, but that must be stated. That must be stated. I don't care if you're tired of hearing it. You're going to hear it. you got to remember that. Okay? So, with that, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 on to verse 23. We may go further in Matthew chapter 6 to the close of the chapter, but if not, what I'd like us to consider this morning is specifically to be found in 19 on to verse 23. We may continue further on, but... Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. What's the place here? Go to John chapter 10. You know where I'm going. You ought to know. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Verses 8 on to verse 11. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep... Did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go out, shall, and shall go in, and go out, go in through the door, and go out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am. The good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Verse 12, but he that is an hireling, like those in the church buildings, and not the shepherd. By the way, my brother, our friend, Brother Alexander, did a wonderful uh, study video on the word church, which I'm going to link in this video. Um, watch that. Watch that. Very, very good. Very good. Let's continue. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Go back to Matthew chapter 6. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. Moth can eat away at clothing that closes the, clotheth the body. Rust, things of metal can rust, okay, can be tarnished. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is. 
you know a pearl of great price is the scriptures a pearl of great price our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father and once he hath found that pearl of great price he selleth all that he may have the pearl of great price selleth all getting rid of things that are not pleasing unto our Lord not being associated with this world not being distracted oh boy oh boy distractions I did a video uh, maybe a year or two ago about distractions hitting it again because it definitely does seem of late that there are a lot of distractions coming out right now that is uh, trying to get the Church of the Living God's attention from what it ought to be focused on and the the coadjutors of the Jesuits not the Freemasons the coadjutors of the Jesuits the Jesuits who run the Freemasons, not vice versa. That was a very interesting video, by the way, beloved. Thank you. Thank you. But in that video, and you know who to whom I'm addressing, that video was taking uh, the attention pretty much away from the Jesuits. And remember where that um, individual who did that um, even kind of suggested that it was that the Pope himself is a Mason and I'm sure he is I'm sure he is it's the Jesuits it's the Jesuits it's the Jesuits keep that in mind people the Masons are run by the Jesuits the Masons are definitely being used today absolutely but remember who is the mother of abominations and who is her church that's all we're going to say about that. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. And there are some that will, of the occult, like Manly Palmer Hall and whatnot, will take this and kind to squeeze in the eye of Horus into this. You know the eye of Horus that is on our disgusting $1 bill? Okay. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Now, what light? What light is that referring to? John, chapter 1, okay? Now, you'll note right away, if therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light, lowercase l. You'll notice that. I hope you notice that. I hope you notice those little things. Those little things. You go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 9. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. See, they're born, we're born sinners, but until a child is made aware of what that, what he has done by birth because of Adam and Eve, what has on them because of that, they're innocent until they are made aware of what has happened because of what they did being related to Adam and Eve, referred to as the age of accountability. Until someone is made aware and accountable, they're innocent. Until the law came, 
You didn't know. Once they know, that's a different story, see. That's a different story. Go back to Matthew chapter 6. If the light of the body, the light of the body is the eye. If, if, therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that light? But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? When we look at verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Go to First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Oh, where is that? <laughs> Sorry, I was looking right at it. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verses thirteen on to verse fifteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Isaiah chapter 14, which ought to be very familiar unto every single one of you of the church of the living God. Okay? Here is verse 12. We're only going to read verse 12. How art thou in uh, Isaiah chapter 14? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? What does Lucifer mean? Son of the morning. What happens in the morning? Bright light. He was taken by his brightness. Okay, in Ezekiel chapter 28. So what do we see? Now go back to Matthew chapter 6. And by the way, a little earlier, sorry for botching up those two verses, okay? We see in verse 22, in Matthew chapter 6, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Thine eye be single. Thine eye be single. Where is your eye looking? On the Lord? Or... But if thine eye be evil, evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If, there, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Note between verses 22 and verse 23, note something. There's no middle ground there, is there? Is there? There's no middle ground. You're either or, either or. There's no middle ground. There's no middle ground. There's no, yeah, I guess so. We note that right away. The light of the body is the eye. Jesus Christ is that light. But we also remember that Satan is transformed into an angel of light. A counterfeit. The light of the body is the eye. If thy, therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Where is your gaze? Upon the things that are of heaven or the things that be upon the earth? What are you looking for? What are you listening for? What is taking the predominance in your life? 
Now, many people will come to this argument. It's like, well, yeah, Brad, but I got to feed my family. I got to pay. Hey, we're there too. We're there too. Okay. But look at what's, what has been going on outside your door. Okay. What has been going on is by the hands of the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? Okay? This we know. And all this and all the philosophies and stuff are distraction from what? To distract our eyes from what? That the economies of the world are being brought onto collapse. Okay? We know, we ought to know this. Okay? A distraction. Because you get your eyes focused on this thing instead of your eye being single. Let me give you another perfect example of a distraction. The shape of the earth. I could really give a rat's rear end what you personally think the shape of the earth is. That's a distraction. That is a distraction. Okay? I, I don't care what you think about it. And dear young brother, I'm not going to do anything about that, just so you know. I believe it's a distraction. I have always said that I believe that is a distraction. Because when you start talking about the shape of the earth, okay, you can go off for hours and hours upon it. And I do like me rabbits. I do. But that's a distraction. And when you look up the, the main source of where things come from, look, I don't care what you think the shape of the earth is. It's a distraction. Another distraction that I have been noticing, maybe, now maybe this is just me, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but it seemeth, and go figure, that at this present time, attention is trying, that they who, the Jesuit order, Mystery Babylon, is trying to divert attention away from herself onto her little subcategories, like the Masons, the, Halum the Illuminati, the Illuminati, I like to call them, okay? <laughs> Founded by a Jesuit, okay? The Knights of Malta, the uh, American Legion, okay? And, and the Rotary Club and all these people, all tentacles of the Jesuit order, Mystery Babylon, to get you to focus on them instead of Keeping your eye upon what the Lord is doing. Distraction. Distraction. It's easy to get distraction. It is. It's very easy to become distracted. Another way that you can be distracted is your sin. Yourself. Things of the world. Lord knows what you have need of. Wants are many. Needs are few. Amen? Amen? I want you, if anything else, from this, to consider, brother, sister, what has been diverting your attention from the scriptures and from our Lord Jesus Christ? What have you been giving excuse to as attributing that which is diverting your attention as attributing it onto the Lord Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Uh, this is as uh, impromptu as it gets, by the way, <laughs> if you haven't figured that out already. I had some correspondence with the sister this morning about it, and it's like, you know, the Lord's like, I'm leading you on something here, Brad. Yes, you are. 
Colossians chapter 3. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 17. If ye, ye is plural, then be risen with Christ, born again, saved, converted of the church of the living God. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, in Second in First Corinthians chapter seven, Paul states that a husband and a, and a wife do need to keep their thing, do need to keep kind of eyes on worldly things. Okay, how to you know provide for my wife, how my wife to provide for me, that kind of thing. Yes, but as husband and wife. As husband and wife, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Don't you dare try to point to me about uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, okay? If you're married, okay, and of the church of the living God, who's the head of your marriage? Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ is the head of our marriage, okay? And yes, because of each other, yes, we do keep, you know, we got to kind of focus on things here of the world. Yes, we do. You know, how my wife is going to eat, that kind of stuff. But as together, as husband and wife, you know, one flesh, and that doesn't mean just physical. As one flesh, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. I'll place there and go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. <clears throat> Verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Is the world crucified unto you? Or are you wrapped up in it? Not being ignorant or flippant. But where is your affection? Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Keep them down. Control yourself. Put down that lust, that wandering of your eyes. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. There are some things that we as man can want so badly that our eye become full of darkness because everything else is cluttered out of the way is darkened but that one thing that you have made an idol of what might that be and that is totally up between you and the Lord what's taking the Lord's place I hope you can honestly, and you don't have to say anything to me. You look yourself in the mirror, Jack. You look yourself right in the mirror. You look in your own eyes. And you say, you ask, what's taking the Lord's place? You have the guts to get in prayers. Lord, show me my sin. Lord, are my eyes blinded? Because of idolatry, whatever it is. Is my eyes blinded that I am putting something before you that I shouldn't? Show me my sins. 
Do you got the guts to pray that? Oh, and let me tell you something, boy. It hurts. You know why? Because I can tell you, the Lord will answer you in that prayer. Especially if there is something that's distracting you. Try them. I dare you. Let's continue. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Children of disobedience, those are they who have heard the word of God and reject it. Not saved. Okay? Children of disobedience, all these things in verse 5 are linked onto children of disobedience. And we are admonished to mortify, put these things down. Because guess what? Your spirit and soul still are housed within the flesh. Okay? Hence, we're going to struggle with it. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But what is the ruling thing in your life? If you say the Lord Jesus Christ, praise the Lord, I hope so. I hope so. But what's getting in the way? What are you allowing to distract you? Verse 7. In the, in the which he also walked some time. Talking in past tense. When ye lived in them. Lived in them. Unfortunately, those of us in the Church of the Living God will, will like to go and visit these places than once we used to live. And when you do, may the Lord chasten, rebuke you, and correct you, humble you, and judge you for it, as he does to me. When I decide to go look at those neighborhoods that the Lord removed me from. Let me give you a perfect example. I used to listen to death metal music. Fear Factory used to be one of my favorite bands. And by <laughs> some coincidence, when I'm allowing my flesh, the predominance in my life, by some coincidence, uh, on YouTube thing, on the, 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 you know, the recommendation, here comes a Fear Factory thing. And I've even called out to these uh, guys at the Fear Factory, giving them links to uh, salvation videos and whatnot, okay, to these death metal heads. <laughs> yeah, probably in retrospect shouldn't have because of the um, things that, you know, the recommendations, but there again. And all it takes is a millisecond for me to hear something from that old band that I used to enjoy. Or even some evil music that I used to enjoy. All it takes is a millisecond. See? See? You have to mortify. You have to put these things down. Verse 8. But now ye also put off all these. What's the first thing mentioned in verse 8? Anger. Anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Be ye angry and sin not. Yes, let not your sun go down upon your wrath. What does that mean? Don't go to bed angry. There's a difference between righteous indignation and you just being angry. Do you know the difference? See, you, you can be, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can hate Roman Catholicism. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hate Roman Catholicism. Hate them. Hate Mystery Babylon. Yes. Yes. Don't let it consume you. Don't let it consume you. Well, how don't you, how do you not let that happen, Brad? Verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. 
Mortify. Keep these things down. Suppress them. Verse 8. But now ye also put off all these. Anger. Jesus was angry. Yes. Yes, he was. But remember. Beg your pardon for that. Anger resteth. Resteth. In the bosom of fools. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Because what happens? <laughs> Both my wife and I can speak from experience. When you go to bed angry, guess what? You're going to wake up angry. Yeah. Wrath. Malice. Blasphemy. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Look at verse 8. That, as far as I can see, is a very good scriptural uh, definition of a good old-fashioned temper tantrum, isn't it? Because what hang happens when someone is angry, they become wrathful, they are malice, they blaspheme, and what could happen? You can let filthy communication come out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. Seeing that ye have, ye have put off the old man with his deeds. But then again, like I said, so many by choice will go and revisit the old neighborhood that the Lord moved them out of. By choice. Not because you accidentally stepped in it. No, no. See, if you're excusing sin in your life by, well, I, 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 I just stumbled into it. You Look at me. You lie. You're a liar. Man up and take accountability and responsibility for what you did. <laughs> Satan didn't force you to do it. Okay? It hurts. But that's what you do. You take responsibility that, and you are accountable to the Lord. I chose to do this. And remember, there is no temptation that has taken you, but that which is common among men. But with the temptation, God will make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, I believe that is. Are you looking for the way to escape? Or do you take the uh, path that the that uh, sodomite guy uh, Oscar Wilde said? The best way to get rid of a temptation is to give in to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 10. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Renewed. Renewed. Are you renewed every day? Are you being renewed every day? How do you renew yourself? Through prayer and through the scriptures. But see, if you forsake the scriptures... If you forsake prayer, you're staying old, you're staying tired, stale, festering, aren't you? Aren't you? Is that what you want? Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Now, verse 12 defines verse 11. Look at the, okay, don't look at me. Look at the text. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. In this context, the elect of God is referring to those of the church of the living God, 
which is both Greek and Jew. Okay? Okay? This isn't talking about cultural differences. Okay? This is talking about those who are elect of God, of the church of the living God. Okay? Rem and remember, the election is salvation by grace through faith, the way of the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? That is what has been elected this way. Okay? Don't forget that. Don't let some scholarly Jesuit Freemason guy tell you otherwise. Okay? Please. Don't get like, oh, oh, they can say big sounding fancy schmancy words that you need a dictionary to go uh, and follow along with them. Verse 12 again. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, one another of the elect of God, the church of the living God. And you know, those of the world, forgive, don't forget, you know, don't, don't put your back, don't, you know, once you grab a hot plate and you burn yourself, don't be a, an idiot, and an idiot is void of logic and reason, and then go and grab the hot handle again. No. No. Because like I've told you before, you hold on to a grudge, you're, good, you're just going to be knotted up inside. Man. You ain't never going to have no peace. You ain't going to move forward. And remember, the devil and the devils that serve him want you stuck back there. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, context, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Context of that verse is, even as Christ forgave you, who are the ones who are actually forgiven by Christ Jesus? Those who are saved, born again, converted of the church and living God. Who come to him on his terms, not your own. Okay? You think Trump is forgiven? No, he's in his sins. You, you think our president Kamala Harris is forgiven? No. No. She's in her sins. She's working for the Jesuits. Okay? <laughs> but the context is, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You know, there are brethren out there of the Church of the Living God who I disagree with. But I do not personally have one problem with someone who is of the church of the living God, who is my brother or my sister. I have not one problem or hold one thing against any one of you of the church of the living God. Those of you who are fake, you got your own problems to deal with at the great white throne of judgment. You, you run along. But when it comes to brethren, I... I ain't got no problem with any of you of the Church of the Living God. I might not agree with you. I might not even like you. And guess what? You might not even like me. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you're my brother. You're my sister. And if a brother who I had, you know, hadn't heard from for a while, all of a sudden came up, come, uh, it's like, Brad, pray for me. From out of nowhere, you know I would. You know we would. Because against our brethren, 
Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity. Charity is self-sacrifice. How do you sacrifice, Brad? You're looking at it. Hmm. If you live anywhere close to uh, uh, northern Illinois, you might get a box of cereal one day that has a track in it. Or uh, open up a, a coffee can thing. It's like, what's this? But enough of that. And above all these things, put on charity which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Right there. Why don't you have peace? Why don't some of you have peace? Is it because you're revisiting the old neighborhood that the Lord took you out of? Or that you're stuck back here desiring something that was and you just won't come to terms with it. Only you can answer that. And if you have the guts, you can ask the Lord for him to reveal it to you. But that takes guts. That takes courage. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. See, if you have the peace of God ruling in your heart, you can face the fact that, oh boy, we can't pay our bills this month unless a miracle happened. Oh boy, we don't know if we're going to eat. I don't know what's going to happen. Because of what the Jesuits are doing out there. I don't know. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Like the good old-fashioned hymns. There are those out there who like to make arguments for with contemporary Christian music. Yeah, by using amplifiers, drums, and stuff like that. No, no. What does this say? What does this say? Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Can you give thanks to God and the Father by our Lord Jesus Christ by listening to CCM? Are you giving thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ when you're putting pornography before your eyes? Huh? Do you not know that the Lord is in you? Unless you be reprobate. Of course, I'm talking to my brothers and sisters of the church of the living God. Hmm? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Not 2 Corinthians, Brad. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 31, 
Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. That's what you're doing. Giving glory to God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 4 on to verse 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now stop. Moderation. Not gluttony. Moderation. The liberal soul shall be made fat. You're liberal by seeking the Lord through the scriptures. By sharing the scriptures with the lost as the Lord guides you. Standing as he would guide you. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now you think about that. You think about that. What's rapidly approaching the redemption of the purchased possession? Isn't it interesting that all these distractions are coming out right now? That are there to, like, for you to worry about what's going on out there instead of keeping your eyes upon our Lord Jesus Christ and in the scriptures. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting, huh? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. Oh, hold your place here. I want to I want to bring a contrast into this. Go to Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. The words of Agur, the son of Jekyll. <laughs> verse 5 on to verse 9 in Proverbs chapter 30. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Yeah, hath God said. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. And what does Paul say? Having food and raiment, let us there be with content. Let us be there with content. Excuse me. Having food and raiment. To be clothed upon with righteousness from our Lord Jesus Christ. And man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Food clothed with Christ's righteousness. Uh, clothed with Christ's uh, righteousness, raiment, and food, the scriptures. Hmm. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. See, you get too much. You can be like King Nebuchadnezzar thinking, My hand hath gotten me all this. Or you can be poor and 
where it says thou shalt not steal. Just because you're hungry does not mean stealing is right. Even though the scriptures give reference to the fact that, okay, yeah, basically if someone steals, they might feel for it, but that doesn't mean it's okay. If he's found, he's going to uh, pay with his entire house. That's a gross uh, a paraphrase of that. But um, yeah, stealing is not right under any circumstance. The ends don't justify the means, see. But it says, be careful for nothing. That doesn't mean be flippant. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. See, the being careful for nothing doesn't mean that you go on flippantly without any care in the world as far as being stupid about it. No, but caring for nothing is by being concentrated on the Lord and going as he will guide you through prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Not because you're going to be crazy brave or something like that. See? And look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We don't know what's going to happen. Neither do you. But we do know what it says in Romans chapter 8, 28, right? Romans 8, 28. Of course, go there. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called, those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, according to his purpose. My wife and I don't know what's going to happen with us. We don't know what the Lord is going to do. We do know without him and without his provision and grace, we can do nothing. We do know what our Lord has called both myself and my wife onto. This we know. This we know. But see, we are not to, um, we want to be <laughs> fed with food convenient for us. Give us neither poverty nor riches. Give us stuff, food convenient for us. Lest we be full and deny thee. Lest we be poor and steal and take the name of our Lord in vain. See? When Christ is truly the center of your life, it doesn't matter if you're single or married. In marriage, Christ is the head of your marriage. If he isn't, then you got problems. And you wonder why the two of you are fighting all the time. See, and the God and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Because he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, right? Right? Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Have any of you ever been asked by someone who has lost that you wouldn't? How can you be so calm during all this? Can I tell you about Jesus Christ, God the Father? Oh, you don't want to hear it? Okay, can I give you a trip? Okay. Verse 8. In Philippians 4. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, what 
whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received, received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. It's baffling to some when you don't know how you're going to pay your bills or how you're going to do this or that, but yet you have peace of God which passeth all understanding knowing that the Lord will do and all you got to do is trust on him you got to put legs in your prayers that doesn't mean that you bring them to pass that means you act upon them Lord said to the children of Israel in the book of numbers there's the promised land I'm going to give it to you Go get it. I'm with you. Go get it. But they didn't. Instead, they brought up an evil report. I'm with you. Turn this on and do this. I'm with you. My wife, I'm with you. They want to poison you. Get out of there. I'm with the two of you. What's distracting you? What is distracting you, brother, sister? And I find it meat. M-E-E-T. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Sex outside marriage, right? Think of it this way. Mingling yourself as the church of the living God with things of the world. A spiritual fornication. Even though this is talking about... Blip, Okay, we know that context shows what that fornication is talking about. But it's a little bit deeper than just that. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and, in, and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, being separate, other. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Uh, hold your place right there. You better know where we're going now. Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual world wickedness in high places, which is mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and her church is Roman Catholicism, and her army is the Jesuit order that controls every single other thing out there. Okay? Okay? 
Verse 9 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Forgive that rapid trail. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in, Macedon in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that we may walk on that ye, excuse me, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. I know that there are some of you who miss someone who is of the church of the living God and have gone home to be with the Lord. I know that. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Titus. Titus. Chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 11. Titus chapter 3. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak, no, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. I lost my place there for a minute. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself, Go back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and verse 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What's distracting you? 
What is taking your eyes away from our Lord Jesus Christ? What is it? Is it anything? And what do you do about it? What do you do about it? Second Timothy chapter four. Verses 1 on to verse 8. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. Oh! No, it says in doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall heap, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Teachers. Oh, say like Jesuits. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. <laughs> Yeah, like the uh, Catholic disease creators um, have your best interest in mind. Yeah. Yeah. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Crown of righteousness. You know, brethren, there are so many things out there, especially at this time, that can divert our attention away from what we ought to keep our attention upon. And you can come up with, well, this is what the Lord will have me to pay attention to. Is it distracting you from uh, the scriptures? Is it Edifying unto the church of the living God. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Thank you so much for watching if you do. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.